Picture the scene. A quiet Sunday morning in Jerusalem. It's less than 48 hours since I saw my best mate dying. I'm still in full on grief mode, even my chest aches from crying. This wasn't just a mate, he was the one I put my hopes in. Hung up there like a fraud, slowly dying through choking. And most of the other people there were shouting insults and joking about the claims he made and the games he played with people's lives. Lives like mine, and I wonder if they're right. Because it wasn't supposed to end like this. I'd seen him do the supernatural, perform prestigious feats, embrace the helpless and hopeless, tell the religious elite that this whole holier-than-thou crowd they were in had missed the whole point. They were proud in their sin, and that they couldn't reach God with their own good behaviour. They needed to be humble and cry out for a saviour. And for that they hated him. So they waited for him, hooks baited for him, plans orchestrated for him. And they got one of my friends to become a traitor, hand him over for silver pieces and only a few hours later, our leader was gone. Did that mean that they'd won? Because when he was with us, he spoke of his kingdom, but if the king was now dead, how the heck would that happen? And when we arrived a week ago, the crowd sang praises, I saw them sing them. But now they'd helped to kill him, the ones who were praising were now the ones laughing. And I'm caught up with all these thoughts, and these questions and doubts. And then there's a knock at the door. It's one of the other followers saying the women had seen him alive. And when I hear a claim like that, I respond with derision, crazy. Those girls have been crying so much, it must have made their vision hazy. They must have mistaken him for some other guy. Everyone knows dead men don't come back to life. But the guy at the door said he was going to check the tomb, because the women had already been there. And when he got back, he agreed with the girls that there wasn't anyone in there. Then these lads from Emmaus reckoned they had dinner with him, and then he just disappeared. And the rest of us thought they were mad, crazier than we first feared. So we got together to talk about it. And then it happened. I saw him standing in the middle, bearing the marks of that death so excruciating. And I couldn't believe my eyes, I thought, I must have been hallucinating. But all the others could see him too. So we thought maybe it was his ghost. But then he showed us the scars on his body, and ate fish prepared by the host. And dead men don't do that. But he wasn't some elusive guy who refused to die. I'd seen him crucified, before my eyes, spear in his side. I knew that he couldn't have faked his own death. So now I'm wondering, how did he make his own breath, reinflate his own chest, and bring his life back? No man could do anything like that. And then we saw who he really was. We'd heard him talk about destroying the temple, then bringing it back three days later. But now we understood, what he'd done here was even greater. See, the temple's not about a building, it's about the presence of God. And we'd been walking alongside God for three whole years, and we all found it kind of odd. That we'd never seen it before, what he'd come to restore. The relationship we had before we all broke God's law. And we could see clearly now, and he said, the world's ready to hear me now, and you'll be my messengers. And so we went out and told the world. So now picture the scene. You're sitting here listening to the most outrageous claim ever stated. A claim that spent most of the past 20 centuries being hotly debated. So I'd say check it out. And if there's no evidence, then chuck it out. Why would you spend your time mucking about with a lie? If the resurrection's not true, then our faith loses all of its power. If Jesus didn't die and rise, this service is just a waste of an hour. But if it's true, it changes everything, and not just for those who believe it. If it's true, it's your only hope, whether or not you receive it. And with this question, there's really no sitting on the fence. He can't be both dead and raised to life, that doesn't make any sense. So here I ask, do you call it the truth or a lie? That's a decision that only you can decide.